Hey everybody, Miss Minnie Lover here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this little gingerbread house. It's not finished yet, but I'm going to finish it off once I show you how to get the main components of the house done. Okay, so you're going to need like a goldish brownish, um, just gingerbread colored clay. I, s I uh, put mine through the pasta machine at a setting of six, and that's in Amico, I think. Yeah, that's an Amico pasta setting. And then I have some Kemper cutters, some square Kemper cutters. The small one is going to be used to do the triangular ends of the house. So I'll just go ahead and get that. I don't know why the camera is so blurry, but I think it's because there's not a lot of light in here right now. So then you have a small square. And then what you're going to want to do is take like a cutter or something and just... Anyways. You want to take two corners off and do your, the best you can to make it even so that you have one end of the house. And now you want all ends to be pretty much even. So when you do your next part, I'll go ahead and cut a square out. And you don't need these temper, temper cutters. You can just make a square, but make sure they're both about the same size. And then you want to take this one and lay it over on top. Press down lightly, and then follow the guidelines so they're the same. And now you have two relatively even house ends. And once you do that, you are going to want to make the sides of the house. So I also take another small square and cut that out. And then I cut the square in half because you want it to be as tall as the end that's not cut here. So let me get my pointer so you guys can see. You want to stop the height of the side where the triangle, where the uh, teepee starts to form. So you want it to be about that tall. So that's a good measuring device kind of thing. But anyways, I have a Kemper cutter, and I mean, it, it makes it pretty even either way if I just cut this in half, so. Anyways, take your square, cut it in half, so that now you have your two sides. And then for your roof pieces, I take a big square again, and then this part I just kind of guessed but the roof doesn't really matter that much, just as long as it is just a little bit longer and a little bit taller than um, than the bottom portions of the house. So let's say we put that together like that. You can kind of guess it and just kind of determine where you want it. And if there's a space at the top, don't worry about it because you can fill that in with frosting. But what I came up with was a little bit bigger than half of this for one side of the roof. So I just kind of eh, just eyed it a little bit. And that part's smaller. And that looked good. In order to make the other piece the same height or the same length and everything, I just put it over another piece of clay. And then I cut it out just like with the triangles. I'll just put that aside. So once you have all of your gingerbread pieces, which I'll do right here, my sides, rooftops, my sides. I have a whole bunch of them made over here because I'm using them for guides. And if you f do find the perfect fit, make sure you make duplicates and. Um, that way you can make more gingerbread houses in the future and you don't have to worry about measuring. 
So gingerbread, as you know, is like a kind of a cookie bread kind of thing. And they cook it. When it cooks, it, they put little air holes in it. So just put little, little air hole things in it. And once you do that, you can texture it because the edges aren't perfectly cut straight. When they cook, they're actually rounded on the edges. So I just take the end of my with my little pointer tool, but you can use like tin foil or something if you want. It doesn't matter. And then you'll see there's there's that line on the top that's perfectly fine because we're going to put frosting on that anyways. So, after you've done this, you can actually bake it at this point um, because sometimes it can be hard to work with soft clay, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I did. Take your frosting and kind of string it up so you have a little a light string like that and then start going diagonal with your icing. icing crisscrosses and the next thing you're going to want to do is um, you can make your own candies whatever you want to do um, I use Christmas sprinkles just human Christmas sprinkles and then between where each part crosses I put a sprinkle This one I've cooked, and I've already put a door on it too. Um, what I did was I just put, made, took a piece of white clay and rolled it into a little worm, and then curved it around and cooked it on the uh, onto the house, just so it was just. I'm do, I was just skipping steps to make it easier. Now you can use whatever you want to decorate it with. I just made some. I made like a. Play Christmas wreath, and I'm eventually going to paint that red. I just took this out of the, the bow red on the wreath. I just took this out of the oven, so still just, it's a work in progress still. I just wanted to show you guys. Um, we can put some frosting on the top and make it, you know, kind of cute. And this clay does not want to warm up. That's why it's so hard to do this thing. Okay, once you've got it long enough, put your pieces off, or however you're doing it. Then I take three of the worms, pair together like that, twist them. Twist them together, but be very careful. So that you get something like that. And then you can put that right on the top. So right. There, that way there's no... There's, um, you can do them along the sides. So as you can see, I put some more. Um, I still, I'm still not finished. But I put some like uh, that fancy frosting technique idea all around the back and sides and I haven't put any icing on that side of the roof yet but that's okay and I put a little frosting on the wreath to make it look like it has snow on it
said, whatever way you want, and your dolls will enjoy a gingerbread house as well. Happy holidays. Subscribe.